my name is Jay and welcome to the channel. Today we are back playing some Planet Zoo and we're back in Boomy Reptile Sanctuary, my main playthrough where we're building a reptile sanctuary on a temperate environment set somewhere in Southeast Asia. In the last episode we worked on our pygmy hippo habitat and that was a lot of fun playing with our little uh, chunky boys, they were super cute and I will be showing off a little bit of them in the next episode because I'm updating their habitat a little bit, getting them new shelter. But that's not what we're going to be doing in this episode. Today we're going to be working on the Education Center and Watchtower. This building is meant to serve as a bit of a central point to the entirety of the park. So that guests, visitors, um, you'd have maybe school groups, larger groups of visitors, they'd come in on a tour. And this would be kind of your first point after you walk through the entrance. You'd come here and you'd go in there and there'd be an information center. There'd be, you know, lots of displays, lots of screens where you can learn about the animals, learn about the park and how it was created. Just um, an area where you can just learn about what the park is all about. And so within this, you'll have a, an information kiosk, you'll have a bit of a coffee shop as well. And as you go further up, the first three floors are probably going to be part of the education center and you'd have different rooms. You might even have um, areas for different staff facilities. And if you go even higher, up past the first three floors, you get to the second set of three floors, which are the watchtower. And if you go right up to the top, you get an excellent kind of bird's eye view of, well, the whole of the park, which I think is really cool. It looks really good. The whole building is made up of a variety of building materials that we've already used across the park. So we're using a lot of the dry stone wall that we've used everywhere else. And we're using a lot of the modern wood. But in a bit of a change, we're also using the wood from the Arctic pack. This wood I think is a bit more rustic, but it does feel more versatile than the modern wood. Because the modern wood is quite bright, it's, quite, it's almost orange. But this, this uh, rustic arctic wood looks really good, I think, because even though it doesn't have that modern feel to it, it, it fits in more different places. And accent, uh, <laughs> sorry about that, uh, accenting it with different pieces of wood and also the dry stone wall, I think makes it look really good. It stands out. For this particular building, as you go along, we do use a mixture of these different materials and we also use some other things like the large round timber beams that you've seen in some of the other parts of the park, specifically within the, um, the Komodo dragon habitat makes a lot of use of it. So those are, end up being quite a big element here as they used to support a lot of uh, parts of this, uh, this building because as you go up the top few floors are actually on a bit of an overhang. They're a bit offset from the building itself and that's for um, Thus for that's not a word. <laughs> uh, therefore, they they require a bit more support. So we're using these big beams, and I think they look quite cool. They look a little bit less uh, less samey, so to speak. They do have a bit of a they they stand out a little bit, and I think that looks quite cool. Apologies if you can hear some sort of a low rumbling sound. Um, there's a bunch of guys outside my house somewhere riding their motorcycles and. They're just so loud and oh god, it's a pain. I can never record without hearing something outside because, well, I, I live in the suburbs, but there's lots of uh, weird noises. Like, I can hear a plane above me and I'm not too far away from an airport either. So yeah, super tough to record when it's actually quiet. And now I'm going to sound really weird because I bet like when I've edited the uh, sound and stuff, you can't actually hear anything. <laughs> so, but I can and I'm always nervous it gets picked up in the, uh, in the audio recording. I also have loads of uh, animals nearby, like I believe some neighbors have dogs that just bark a lot, so you probably would hear some of that in the recordings. But you know, that was a tangent on why my audio doesn't sound so good. But uh, back to the build itself, I ended up spending quite a lot of time on it. I didn't think it was going to be as complex as it was, but I think the end product is really worth it. It did take me a few hours and I did think to myself halfway that I might want to give up because it felt like it wasn't really coming together. But as I went along, it just it just kind of uh, clicked, you know? All the pieces started to make sense and by the end, I was like really, really proud of it. I think it looks like quite good and it's probably one of my favorite builds in this park. 
I think I have a few favorite builds in this park. Um, the Komodo Dragon Habitat, absolutely great. I, I think it's, I might call it an arena. It's kind of like an arena. Um, the Komodo Dragon Arena sounds pretty badass, so <laughs> I'll call it that. And also this particular building, they both look really cool. And I add in a lot of similar elements in both. For example, the white canopies make a return here. You guys know I really like my white canopies. I've used them for a few different habitats now. Have I? No, I've used them for like two. <laughs> yeah, but I really like them. I like the effect. I think it looks pretty cool. Um, adding in these fabric pieces to offset the, you know, the sharp angular wood pieces. I think just it's a really nice contrast and makes it look a lot more cohesive. Like everything's kind of coming together. And it kind of softens the look of the whole building as well. It makes it look more inviting, more, more comfy almost. I don't really know how to describe it, but yeah, it just, like I said, softens up the, the look of the building. And I think it works to quite great effect here, especially because this building is very much um, rectangular, very angular, um, not very many round pieces aside from the timber pieces that we use to support everything and can look almost a bit too utilitarian and too um, brutalist, is that the term? I'm not an architect, so I'm not particularly familiar with a lot of these terms. I'm just pulling them out of my ass, so if that's wrong, please do let me know. But yeah, it looks very straight, very um, angular, and I think using the fabric pieces and the round timber pieces to offset all that makes it look so much more inviting and a lot more like it was actually made for people to be using instead of just like, you know, a big block of stone and wood you know so that ended up working a lot better i think within the interior of the building um what we ended up doing is again putting in an information kiosk and a coffee shop putting in some picnic benches a few tabletop areas a few different screens as well showing off the different animals within the park some conservation boards talking about conservation issues that the world is currently facing and uh I also decided to kind of put in different layers. Okay, this is going to be a bit tricky to explain. So with the path system in the game, you can make different path uh, layout within a building, but if you want to save the building as a whole, the path isn't going to come with it. So what I did was I introduced wood pieces directly beneath each path so that if the building were to be moved or saved to the workshop like I did earlier and I'll put the link down in the description, um, the person who does download it or if I was to use it in the future, I would know where the paths go thanks to the wood pieces acting as a guideline. I do hope this gets changed in the future, I'm not sure if it can because of the limitations of the game engine so that we can save path pieces with the building itself but I'm not sure if that's even doable, if it would be nice to have but Again, all, all down to whether the engine can actually handle it. So this is going to be probably the third or fourth thing I upload to the workshop and I do hope people make use of it. I believe some of my older pieces are getting used quite a lot which I'm really happy about. I think I've got a couple thousand downloads which is really nice to know. So feel free to use this wherever you like in your parks and do let me know if you find a good spot for it or if you want to change it up and make it your own feel free to do that as well. And send me some pictures, I would absolutely love to see what you guys do with it. You know, just send them to me down here in the comments or if you um, if you can find me on Reddit as well. I'm always on the Planet Zoo subreddit under the same username, hypothetically J. So yeah, just, just um, send me a message or just show me the pictures, that would be pretty cool. I also usually post on Reddit right before, I mean right after I upload on YouTube as well. Usually a screenshot or something, um, just so people can see what we're doing here. And I think this building especially, I'm really really proud of it, so yeah, make, do with it what you want. I would absolutely love to see what you guys get up to. Aside from this building, um, recently I uploaded my Singapore Zoo video, which I've been talking about for like two weeks. And it's doing pretty well, I'm really happy that people are seeing it and enjoying it. And if any of you are interested, I'll put a link on the screen now if I can remember. <laughs> I hope I can remember, if not it's just on my channel. And um, yeah, it, it, I mainly filmed it so that people could have inspiration for their Planet Zoo builds. I filmed all the different habitats and all the really interesting different layouts at Singapore Zoo, which is actually one of the best zoos in the world. In my opinion, it's the best one I've ever visited. And I've visited a lot of zoos. <laughs> I visit one every time I go to a new country and um, I've seen so many at this point. Some really bad ones and some really great ones. 
And uh, yeah, just uh, feel free to have a watch on that video because a lot of the habitats are quite cool and I would like to replicate them myself in the parks and hopefully can provide you guys with a lot of inspiration as well because I know not everyone can go out to a zoo um, in different parts of the world. Like for example, I've got I've had the chance recently because I've just moved back from the UK to have a very much of a, um, a big contrast between a zoo in a very cold climate area versus a zoo in the tropics here. And uh, seeing that contrast I thought was pretty interesting, especially for a lot of the different types of animals you have at both. For example, obviously it's a bit easier to keep cold weather animals in the UK and it's easier to keep warm weather animals here in um, Southeast Asia. But obviously switching those around it's a bit trickier, so it's very interesting to see the, um, the contrast. So if you're from a colder country or you're from you know somewhere which is not the tropics, this video especially I think might be quite helpful because you can really see how they deal with uh, different types of animals in the tropical environments and how they make use of a pre-existing rainforest environment and integrate that into a zoo, which I think is absolutely really fascinating. So definitely feel free to check that out. And because Bumi Reptile Sanctuary here is meant to be set in Southeast Asia, um, specifically Malaysia or Singapore, I would like to change it up, well not change it up, but I want to add in more of this, uh, more of a tropical feel to it because right now I'm using primarily temperate foliage outside the habitat and tropical foliage within. And I'd like to soften that gradient, I'd like to have tropical foliage make its way throughout the park itself. Not like massive kebab trees or anything, but you know smaller trees like the mangrove apple, um, a few of the actual mangrove trees alongside the, um, the water, more reeds, small water lilies. Just to show that we're kind of on the edge here between the tropics and more temperate climates because there are areas near where I live which are like that. In fact, as we go on with this park, I'm realizing more and more that I might have subconsciously been basing this park on this actual park in real life that's not far away from where I live. It's called the Putrajaya Wetland Park and I will try and remember to link it in the description. It's not a zoo or a wildlife reserve, it's more of a, a nature reserve in general where you can go in there, there's education centers, there's a watchtower like the one here, and um, you can just walk around it and it's really nice, again, very much a mix of temperate and tropical environments, lots of wetland regions, lots of water, lots of um, water birds, lots of Asian water monitors that hang out there. It is a bit of a haven for wildlife, but it wasn't designed as a zoo or anything like that. And it is somewhere that I used to go all the time as a kid, and. I haven't been in a while so I might actually go back there when I get the chance because it's not too far away from where I live. I just gotta have, uh, have a look around because I realized that, that, I mean that park was a big part of my childhood, I used to go there all the time, it did foster my love for nature a little bit, the education centers they have. Might go there, might even take some videos and do something similar to what I did for the Singapore Zoo video. And yeah, uh, I'll let you guys know when I do that because it is absolutely, um, Interesting how, how much it's influenced this park, like, subconsciously. So that's a bit interesting. Uh, again, apologies for the sound if you can hear that. There's a lot of noises in the background. There's, and again, another person with a motorcycle. I do not know why. <laughs> don't know why they're all so loud. I mean, is there something wrong with your bikes? I, I don't know. <laughs> and also there's a bird chirping, which is actually not a bad sound. It's quite cute. So uh, that's pretty cool. We got a lot of cool garden birds where I live. Um, that just kind of pop in and out. We have the pink necked green pigeon that I spotted yesterday, which is a pretty rare garden bird, but I haven't seen one since I was 15, but it randomly popped up near my house. They're pretty cool, have a look at them online. And also we have a lot of other cool garden birds because we do live in the tropics, so we're not limited to just sparrows or anything like that. Yeah, back to the build itself. Um, again, I'm very happy with how it turned out at the end. I think it, it really adds a lot to the park, giving it to more height as well as um, more, just more depth and just helps with flesh out the park itself in terms of buildings because we don't have an awful lot of uh, actual functional buildings here so far. And because of that, I think I might actually expand on this and add some more staff facilities because I actually don't know if I mentioned this in the video so far, but we are running out of um, space for our staff because I made a decision of hiring like a billion staff just because, you know, I'll let them do their work and no one's going to be overworked or anything. And because it's sandbox mode, it's not, we don't have to worry about cash or anything like that. 
But I think it means I need to start introducing more staff facilities as well. Also, uh, if you remember from the last episode, we had a bit of an issue with our baby ostriches where they kept trying to escape and they kept successfully escaping. Uh, between episodes, I've gone ahead and baby proofed that. <laughs> the habitat just, mean, uh, just meant raising up some rocks a bit higher than they were. But that was a pretty cool mechanic I didn't know was a thing, that baby animals are more agile than their parents and can escape way easier. So <laughs> keep, in, keep that in mind if you guys are building a, any uh, parks in, in Planet Zoo. Babies are very, very uh, capable of escaping your, your previously escape-proof habitats. So that was fun. I don't have any cinematics of the animals for you today, uh, it's just cinematics of this building and of the whole park um, from, the, from the view of this building. I do think it turned out really nice. Um, I also added an, an elevator shaft. I, again, I don't know if I mentioned this in the video already. I might have and I might just be repeating myself, but yeah. I put an elevator shaft because I wanted the whole of this park to be wheelchair accessible. And so, uh, so far I believe most of the park is in fact wheelchair accessible. I don't think there's anywhere where you couldn't get there if you were on a wheelchair. And this elevator here was a lot of fun to do. So I just, basically it is just a big cylinder Oh, cylinder, a big cuboid. <laughs> a big cuboid that goes right up to the top of the watchtower. And I made the um, the elevator doors using these metal sheet pieces that are actually signs, I think. And it turned out looking pretty cool, so I'm happy that that worked out. And again, as we move forward, I like to keep this ability in mind because not everyone can access different parts of it, but if they're just specifically staircases, things like that. So again, I'm going to keep accessibility in mind for all the future builds as well. And uh, yeah, yeah, that, that's pretty much it for this episode. I really hope you've enjoyed all this. Next episode, we're probably going to introduce our crocodiles finally. Um, not sure whether we're going to do our gharial first or the saltwater crocodile. Both of them have relatively low population requirements, which is a bit of a shame. I wanted a large population of crocodiles, but we'll, we'll figure something out. I might, like I said in a previous video, I think we might have multiple habitats with the same species but with different population layouts so that might work and yeah thank you so much for watching please do leave a comment if you enjoyed uh, the video or if you have any feedback or anything like that um, the link to this building again will be in the description so you can download it and play with it in your own parks subscribe if you enjoyed this content and i will see you guys in the next one bye